one wrong move and this tree could fall, taking with it a thriving colony of African honeybees. What lies within is a fortress, hidden, fortified and fiercely defended. Tonight, you're not just rescuing bees, you're breaching a castle built by nature herself. Here in the north of Johannesburg, a gardener has surrendered a corner of his property. And why? Because of them, the Apis milliferis gitolata. Tough, territorial and masters of adaption. They've built a home inside the base of a syringa tree, a fortress with one tiny door and no idea on how deep the kingdom runs. They all clumped on the outside, yeah. The question is, how do we yeah. save them without risking it all? At first glance, the signs are subtle. A few guard bees hanging around a hole. Uh, but I listen closely and I can hear the hum of a thousand bees. African honeybees don't just choose a spot, they claim it. In this tree, it's perfect. Protected from the rain, insulated from temperature swings, hidden from predators. A medieval castle in the plant kingdom. I think it might go down. Now we had two choices. Option one, an eye trapping, a gentle method. Uh, you can have a look at some of the other videos on my channel around this. But with trees, you never know how many entrances there are. Miss one and your eye trapping just doesn't work. Option two, a cutout, like opening a drawbridge into the heart of a fortress. Riskier, but with the right planning, far more effective. We're going to try and cut into this tree, but we don't want this big tree to fall down. So this is going to be like surgical precision. Trees like this can be deceptive. One minute they're solid, the next hollow and unstable. We examined every angle, tested the integrity and marked our cut. It's a big base. Strategically. It's a bit hollow down the bottom here. Just large enough to access the core. So I think we're going to do like small cuts. But not enough to compromise the structure Just to of the see tree. what we're dealing with. Okay, it started off just with a small square, eh? Yeah. You saw how I did that other one. I'm not in on the top, it's the bottom bit of the chainsaw went through. But the top isn't. Do you want to get the chainsaw going again? Yeah, I think so. You're going to have to cut anyway this side, I think, to get a decent hole in there. Yeah, alright. I'm trying to open as much as I can so I know better way to cut. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking you must cut. I can see hive. Okay, good. So you come here. Okay. So I'm actually thinking. I'm thinking I cut yeah. this whole section, yeah. Yeah, if that's I what can. I was thinking as well. Remember, you're gonna cut into the oh. well, the integrity of the tree. Yeah. Uh, so, so go a little bit, little bit at a time. I don't want to start hearing cracking and then the tree falls over. Yeah. True. Okay. With the 
first cut, we smelled it. Get Wax, honey, heat. And then there it was. Full yeah, pollen, just behind mm. the bar, right on target. This wasn't luck, it was planning, precision, and knowing the species. That looks positive. Yeah, that's propolis. And then I can see a bit of comb, very old comb. That, that comb is compared to the usual comb that we find. There's a lot of so propolis. What are you thinking, going up or down? Um, it seems like it does go up a little bit more. I'm thinking I'll need to cut out this top piece either way. You think I got up? I don't know. What do you think? No, I don't, I don't think it goes up much. Just trying to keep it the same. So cut, just cut like that piece like that. Okay. Be. I don't want to cut into the comb, you know? Yeah. So I'd rather just cut a bit of the tree. And wedge out the rest. Oh, that's a decent piece. Yeah. And this must be the top, because this is the honey. Yeah. So it's going to go down into that cavity below. Yeah. And this is the end. I can see the wall on this left side. African bees can stretch their comb deep into spaces, sometimes up to three meters down. We had to assume the worst and plan for it. Did you know the internal half temperature for Apis mellifera scutellata, the Africanized honeybee, is maintained within a narrow range of 33 to 36 degrees Celsius, with the optimal range being 34.5 degrees Celsius. This precise temperature regulation is crucial for the development of the brood, which is the eggs, larvae, and pupa. Bees actively regulate the hive temperature through various behaviors like fanning, water spreading, and clustering. Yeah, here they all come, sure. Yeah, you see how they're scattered once I try to grab this piece. Uh, it's got a bit of pollen bread on it. Using our custom bee vacuum, we gently collect the bees. Drawing them into the container with controlled airflow. No harm, no heat, just a safe transition from the wild to the managed. Oh, there you go. The honey is so soft though. Yeah, so they're tall, hey? That one. Yeah. yeah. One in a way where I cut just above the brood. Mm -hmm. I want to take out this bit where there's honey and pollen and whatnot, and I want to see if I can just pull this bit of brood straight out. Yeah. If I can do it nicely, then we can put that into a frame. I also hope there's not too much space at the bottom for this comb to drop. So. so that's just honey, eh? Yeah, that's just honey and pollen. Take all the tops off and see, maybe that'll help you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which then take the top off of this next one as well. Yeah. Give you a bit more space, won't it? Yeah, I'd, yeah. Let me give it a try. Ah, uh, sure. Come get it up. Ah, it's a big piece. <laughs> yeah, try. Ah, okay. You, you see what I mean? That's quite deep, eh? Yeah. Okay. Might need to... Cut it and then... Pull. Yeah. But then it might drop down, I don't know. So I think that top piece is getting in the way. Okay. Trying to cut it straight as well. I'm gonna yeah, scrap, yeah. Brood, a little bit of nectar and pollen. This colony was thriving. Their queen had done well. Pull it up and then cut the frames. No, it's fine. You got it. Yeah. Uh, I did break, break off at the bottom though. That's a nice bit of brood. Just keep in mind this is the <laughs> top where yeah, I cut. Oh, here's the bottom bit of it. Sure, oh, okay, so it go. does go quite deep. Did you know Scutellata colonies reproduce often? Frequent swarming is a key trait and this leads to rapid genetic distribution and adaptation. Oh, sure. Another oh, wow. nice. big, beautiful piece of brood. You can see all that there. And the other side, all just beautiful brood. Very dark souls though. Okay, so that's a whole piece you got out there. Yeah. Well, well, that's the bottom parts of where I cut the honey at the top. Yeah. So that was the second one from the left. Okay. So this other one on the left, I'm also going to try pop off. We remove the comb slowly, section by section. Brewed into frames, honey harvested for the gardener. This isn't okay. extraction, it's transplantation. Shake these bees off by the hive. This one's just eggs and a bit of resources. What's the issue? No, it's the bands. Uh, in the back. Vacuum up some more bees as they come out. You can see, you can see it actually goes quite deep in here. Probably a piece of comb down there that I might not be able to reach. As you can see, they filled these pieces in with brood. A lot of bees in this hive. Some nice pieces of comb though, just quite old. Sure, I think I'm reaching the end here. Yeah, I didn't think it was that good. But on the end here, it's just uh, empty comb and a bit of pollen, it seems. It tells a bit of a story, yeah. Yeah. Sure, it's gonna be tough to get the bees at the bottom here. So the only thing is it goes quite deep, so I'm vacuuming blind for a bit. Okay. But I can hear there's a lot of bees getting sucked up, at least I hope it's bees. Before calling this job done, we clean up as much wax and scent residue as possible. If we don't, scout bees may return trying to rebuild. A ghost colony returning to an empty fortress. We check, recheck, triple check, every bee that can be saved is. All right, you've got a nice clumps in the back of you. Let me wrap them out. In your head and your back.
by the also to be a all on this big company that Yeah. <laughs> they like clumping on the back yeah. of the suit and then yeah. on the head as yeah. well. There you go. You done, eh? Yeah. Let's switch off. I don't think the tree's gonna fall down, eh? No, it can't. Uh, <laughs> it can't. If you see how much is already missing from the inside. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to fall on each time when it's supposed to, yeah. but not now. Because that was my only worry, eh? with these yeah. tree ones you cut too much and then yeah. next thing the tree falls yeah, down. It's yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's probably the worst yeah. possibility as well. If it falls down, it will be Okay, Eat, where are we heading to? Kailami. Kailami? Yeah, so okay. we gotta so we're gonna pack take all the stuff up. These are in the box, they're in that box there. Basically hear them in here. Turn the light. Let's see if they can see anything. There's a mesh that goes here. So they get stuck in these two boxes. Yeah. Then there's a mesh and then this box. Oh. So. We head to our Kailami apiary and it's quiet, cool, the perfect time for transition. The frames are prepared and the hive awaits. Now comes the moment of truth. We place the vacuum canister beside the hive and move the bees gently into the box. Gently brushing the bees, the workers fanning and releasing their pheromones to say to the queen that they are here and this is home. kingdom doesn't end because its walls are breached, it evolves, relocates, rebuilds. This colony is alive and now it thrives with space, food and protection. A new chapter begins. Here's the question. Would you have chosen the same method that we did? What would you have done if the hive was deeper or if the tree had begun to fall? To see more incredible rescues, the African honeybee from walls, water pumps, rooftops and even underground, explore our bee removals playlist. I promise the buzz is worth it. <laughs>